Hello, welcome to Wooden Spoon Data. My name's Woody, and we're with. I was gonna. I was hoping you'd come in there, Chris. We're with Chris <laughs> here for for uh, for Wooden Spoon Data. He's he's the guy that comes back again. Yeah, basically uh, requesting you every week at this point, mate, to to go over things. <laughs> um, look, yeah, let's kind of get into it with the first game here. Um, we got a big one with Brisbane Collingwood, both walking in uh, without a match and one walks out with a, without a winning match as well. So Brisbane not looking great, but, but Collingwood definitely, uh, yeah, definitely kind of got what's going. Um, I suppose my questions to start with centre around Brisbane more than Collingwood. Um, yeah, did you want to start on Collingwood first? Obviously, they're the winners. We don't want to go over the losers too much. Yeah, like I don't think it was a super impressive win. I think like neither team was really at their what you'd say their best from last year. Certainly not. Yeah. But, and both both looked a bit shaky in certain times of the game. Like that's what a comeback from Brisbane. It yeah. really looked like Collingwood was going to fall over, but they did exactly. fight back. Exactly. And it, look, if if we're going to mention that, I think we should also mention Andrew Whelan. He's um he's kind of the one that gets the information done at Wheelo Ratings. If you if you're interested, they do some awesome stuff there. Um, also, so go check him out. But also, uh, Andrew Whelan on his Twitter releases this uh, graphic every week, and it's quite interesting. So if you notice there. Um, you've got the scores at the top and you've got expected score as well. So we got a plus expected score from Collingwood of 19.5. So I uh, had them at about 71 in their sort of expected shots. And look, expected shots is based on where the shot is, um, what would normally go in from, from that sort of position. Um, if you look at quarter two in the shot maps there, there's there's nothing from Collingwood and it's, it's kind of impressive, in my opinion, that they did come back from from having what twenty five percent in their forward half in that second quarter to to really owning the the game in the last with with fifty eight percent in their forward half. So, yeah, for me, um, they they obviously sealed it in the third, but yeah, for me, they they kept it without uh, they kept Brisbane from coming back in the fourth there and and really sealed the game shut with with their sort of defensive efforts, but. Um, yeah, they they're not the team of old. Um, they're not the team that won the won the cup last year, but they're looking better. Um, but on to on to Brisbane because I I have more thoughts about this, and, and I'm wondering what you think as well. Um, look, what do we think about Bris Brisbane? Um, I was about to say Bris Vegas, which you know we we all know the stories <laughs> there, but. Um, what do we think about Brisbane, the Vegas stories, uh, everything that goes on? Do you, do you think it's playing into their results at the moment? Like, I don't. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think this is a surprise from Brisbane. I feel like if nothing had gone on, they'd probably still be in the same position. They're just, they're just a bit bit off. They haven't played bad footy. They've just been beaten. Yeah. I mean, and losing games they shouldn't lose and have proven in the last couple of years they wouldn't lose. But it's just a bit of bad form, I think. I think that's my major question, right? Like, is this bad form something they'd normally do? Like, they they lost to Carlton by a minuscule amount. I think it was a a little like a point or two from memory. I'm just trying to double it check wasn't it. Much, yeah, yeah, it was it was literally a point. Um, beat, oh no, sorry, didn't beat. Uh, got beaten by Frio in Frio, which was you know a bit of a surprise, but Frio's looking better. Um, and then yeah, obviously. Collingwood got the best of them, who, who beat them last year. So, I don't know. I, I guess how much do we read into Frio would be my major question here because, like, you know, obviously we think Carlton's going to do all right this year and um, Collingwood should bounce back a fair bit. Um, so, yeah, I guess what what do we what do we read into Brisbane, you know? I think we got to wait. Got to wait. I think we can't tell from this sample size. Same as Collingwood last week at three and zero. It yeah. seemed all doom and gloom, but now they've got a win on the board, and everyone will back off for the week. And Definitely. I mean, Brisbane have kangaroos this week. If they lose that, then I guess that's when we panic. That was going to be my question. Do do we actually see Brisbane potentially losing this to the can? Because I kind of do. Like the kangaroos have looked pretty good. Um, I've been. 
I don't think uh, Brisbane's forward line's really produced much this year. And look, if they're going to produce something, it, it will be against the, the Kangaroos' defence. But um, yeah, I, I really kind of question, you know, if they lose next week, can they even make finals? Like zero and four, it seems pretty unlikely. A loss to the Kangaroos is a, is a big one. Like surely, surely then you have to reassess. But I think they bounce back. I, I still tip them to finish top four, I think. I don't think I do in the last couple of years. But I would I would wonder, the main question for me, because I've been spouting on about this for a while, I don't think Hipwood's done great. Uh, I don't think their they're duo, duo forwards are great. Do you, do you make changes? Um, do you kind of bring in a smaller, kind of quicker person? They were playing two rucks in the first place. Uh, who do you bring in, I guess? I mean, Kai Lohman, maybe you give him more time. Um, I, I sort of feel like also this this conversation was being had last year. Brisbane started not this badly, but a little slow when everyone was like, they can't win a premiership with Denaher and Hipwood being the forwards. And then they got within a kick of winning a premiership with and they've Denaher done it. and Hipwood. I, I, I think they'll keep playing him and hope he comes to form like he did last year. I think, yeah, it'll be interesting what happens. There's There seems to be a bit of public pressure already um, on Hipwood. So... If you're going to drop him, I wouldn't be surprised if, if it's public pressure gets it done this week. But yeah, my, my question was going to be, do you think both teams can make top four? And you've answered Brisbane now. Do you, do you think Collingwood can as well? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think both yeah. should still be fairly well favoured to make top four. But I do think, I mean, Sydney dropped the game to Richmond this week, but like that's going to happen, so... What's the difference between them dropping one to Richmond and Collingwood dropping one to St Kilda, St. Kilda. dropping one to <laughs> to Essendon? You know, um, you know, what's it mean in the grand schemes of a premiership? Uh, no, look, I get, yeah, I think both potentially can do it, but they're making it pretty hard for themselves. Um, look, let's move on to game number two: North versus Carlton. North lost another game, but they look much more competitive. Um, I guess before we get on to Carlton. Um, who do you think their first win will be against? Who do they like? Do you think they can beat Brisbane next week? I I don't think they'll beat Brisbane. No, I, I wouldn't <laughs> be tipping them. Neither would I. But I think, uh, think there is first win. Like it's gonna be because they are playing good football. I think like it's a good foundation of football. I tend to agree. I guess you'd say round six versus Hawthorne is their best chance for a win. And I think at the moment you'd almost back them in to beat Hawthorne. I would back them in to beat Hawthorne. Um, before that, they they also have uh, the Cats in Geelong, so I don't think they'll win that. Um, so, yeah, look, I'd, I'd back in round six. It, it should be a good one. I think it's down in Tassie from memory. I'll just have a quick look. Um, no, it's in Melbourne. So they Marple. Yeah, they've, I reckon they've got this one. Um, but, yeah, look, moving on to Carlton. Jeez, they look good. Uh, they looked pretty good. It is north, but... Uh, how far do you think they go? Um, what's what's kind of the go for them this year? Uh, well, as a like, I don't think I think Carlton need to lose personally. I think they've probably <laughs> won enough already. Let's, let's, yeah, as an Essendon fan, I'm not surprised. Not to everyone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm not surprised you're saying that. Um, so I guess you think they're pretty. They're going to finish pretty high, and it's going to be a painful year as an Essendon supporter. Is that right? Uh, I think they're pretty well a big chance for top four. That's what they should be aiming for. And they'll be disappointed if they don't get there, I think. Yeah, I um, I tend to agree. Um, look, they they do seem to be on the march. Um, I reckon, who, who have they got this coming week? From from memory, they're playing Frio. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, yeah, I reckon they've got game, this one man. as well. But, yeah, it'll, it'll determine where Frio's at. And, um, yeah, look, with that, moving on to the next game... Frio versus Adelaide. Um, what's your main takeaway from this before I kind of go on my spiels? Uh, like, as, as far as takeaway, like, it's really hard to read into either side. Like, is Freeman all as good as they're looking like? And is Adelaide as bad as they're looking like? Like, it's so, sort of hard to tell. Yeah. I would have thought Adelaide was a fair bit ahead of Freeman and should have been looking to beat Freeman at home before the season started. But. Mm. Maybe three minutes. Maybe last year was the was the off year. I I guess that's my thoughts coming coming into it. Like what I think we've got to do a bit of a dive into it and figure it out and, and kind of what they've they've really 
lost and then found again. But um, yeah, they do have interesting matches against Port and Carlton coming up. Um, I guess the the question will be, can they keep that form up against these two? And, and that'll kind of determine at least my thoughts on them going forward. Um, yeah, but Adelaide definitely don't look great. Um, I don't, re- I didn't a hundred percent have them making finals when, when others had them, you know, maybe making top four. Um, I'm pretty much ready to write them off. Uh, what do you think they need to do? Yeah. Like, um, I think the biggest thing is Dawson's form is just off. Like he's still getting the possessions he needs. He's still doing the tackles he needs, but it just, yeah. he just isn't impacting games like he was last year in the back end of the year before. Yeah. I guess my question is because they, they seem to be rotating him off half back and in the center a fair bit. And they've, they've brought Crouch back into the lineup with Laird, you know, Crouch and Dawson. None of them is particularly explosive. They're all good at getting the footy and extracting, but I, I guess maybe I'm wondering if they've, they're missing more Saligo in there or if they're missing more younger players that might get them a little bit more pace and, and maybe just settle Dawson off, off the back line to general it, but, or, or even Laird, they're both great in that sort of half back role, but yeah, they need to switch yeah, like, up uh, their form. I, I think you keep Dawson in the midfield. I think he's, he's got the most, like he's not coming towards the end of his career. Like Laird is, I think he's coming towards his peak and his peak should be in the midfield. Yeah. Yeah. I tend he, to agree. He's a very good player. I, I agree. And and look, that might mean, hey, maybe you let Laird just sit back or maybe you do drop Crouch. Maybe it's like too many of the same sort of type um, at the moment. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, they they do need a fiddle. Um, yeah, they, look. They I, really need to beat Melbourne this week, I think. It's a I was, big, big I was, game for them now. I was going to say, I mean, it's at home. And look, Melbourne's Melbourne's done really well. I don't want to touch on them too much with, with you know, being – uh, not not right now, but yeah, that, that's going to be a tough game for them. And I, I think it's do or die. Like they really like need to show something and actually win it. Cause if they don't do it, they're zero, what, four, five. I don't even know. Zero, four. Yeah. And they're like, if you're a, if Adelaide fan, you would have been looking at the start of the season thinking you'd be three and oh, not zero and three. Like that's pretty disappointing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like they're three very winnable games. Exactly. And you know, we said it from the start. These are the games that are going to be important and they're just not showing it up right now. not showing up to it right now. And look, this is going to be, in my opinion, kind of their final test. Like they need to play well against Melbourne at home and actually beat them to, to realistically have a good chance of even making the eight, um, let alone yeah, having a, a they final. Win. They um, need to win. So yeah, it's for me. It's Adelaide's on the chopping block. Um, but yeah, it it is time for, I guess, a little bit of a break here. We're we're gonna go into who's that footballer first. So yeah, enjoy. Who's that footballer? It's Alex Jesselinko. So that was Who's That Footballer. Uh, welcome back, I suppose, if that's going to be our ad breaks going forward. Um, yeah, we'll go straight into Media Watch. Chris, I think you had an interesting one this week. There's been a, like, it's been a few things. Hard to really pop people, but I think you had a fairly good one. Uh, I just saw on the uh, Sunday footy show yesterday that um, Isaac, Isaac Smith was doing some commentating. I'm not sure who for, and... Uh, Started listing off the Port Adelaide defenders and included Matthew Broadbent, you know, who retired like eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, it feels back like... in his heyday. I reckon. I mean, mate, I don't, I can't remember the last time somebody said the the name Matthew Broadbent to me. So Matthew Broadbent, bit of a slipper. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, it, and it's also funny because like Izzy's not an old footballer. Like, why would you think of <laughs> him anyway? Um, yeah, I just thought that was odd. You mentioned that when we were kind of going through options, and I was like. Yeah, brother, <laughs> that's a weird one. Um, so yeah, Izzy, pay attention, mate. That's uh, that's you got a, you got the top jobs here, brother, in in this industry. So you know you're gonna know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, look, moving on to the next game, we're looking at the game that I've been dreading recording. St Kilda versus Essendon, mate. Your team got up. Uh, big win, big big win. Yeah, it was good. Um, 
not from a Saints fan perspective, uh, <laughs> but you know, it was a good game from Essendon. Um, they look better. Um, I guess you know they they kind of have um, they've improved more than I thought. I didn't think this would be even particularly that close towards the end. I thought there'd be a, a fair stretch that St Kilda get out, but I guess. My my only solace is I think it was a bit more effort rather than structure. Uh, so I hope next time we versus that that's not going to be as much as a problem. Um, hopefully we can get that back on track with an easy beat against Richmond, fingers crossed, um, with their outs. But yeah, looking on um, on like who we liked, I'm, I guess I'll go over Essendon. You can go over St Kilda. Um, I did enjoy Stringer. I've not been uh, a huge believer of Stringer over the last few years, but you told me Contract Stringer was back, and he is back. And Contract Stringer's back. He killed it, mate. I I was, and if he hadn't given away that goal to us as well after nearly getting yeah. his own, uh, yeah, could have been, been four. Yeah, could have been an even better match. But um, yeah, I think he was the one I was most impressed with, having not held. Him in regard for a couple of years now. Um, yeah, moving on to to you, mate. Uh, anyone from St Kilda you thought stood out? I uh, just touched on Jake Stringer. He's just he's doing well. I thought his <laughs> last quarter was um was the difference. Maybe like yeah. he just seemed to be winning the ball, winning winning the moment, and he got it and took it. Yeah, he definitely did. It was quite impressive. I uh, I want to touch on um, and I know you've been having a little bit of a, bit, mm. a little bit of hate for this guy, but um. Yep. Riley Bonner hitting, nearly hitting the K with our disposal, meters gain. That's, yeah, that's huge. It was impressive. And look, yeah. I I guess my issue over the K, over a K. Did he end up getting over a K? Wow. Yeah, I thought it was nine. Yeah, as a thousand and, and eighteen. I thought it was nine sixty or something. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Look, that Nick is. Martin had forty four touches and couldn't even get that. Yeah. Couldn't even get anywhere near that. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, I wasn't going to touch on Nick Martin too much, but um. Yeah, that was odd. His he'd step like one step out and chip it to the pocket, and I, I saw Keynesy getting upset about that, which we could have done for Media Watch. Um, but yeah, it's for me it was an odd call. Like it's it's kind of I don't even like chips to the pockets. But in terms of Riley Bonner, um, he had 17 turnovers. It's the most in an AFL game since 2012, as uh, since we were really started recording these stats. Um, I don't know. I like for me, it almost it brought up an idea for me. We should have meters lost, like we have meters gained. <laughs> but like if we kick it straight to an opponent and then they start gaining meters, isn't that just like meters lost? Like for me, I think there's a stat there that we could look at one day. But I do not have the knowledge on how we get that like, done. Um, like if you go on through his turnovers, what sort of kicks were they? Because it's like it's, see. I haven't gone through everyone, but it, there was, I'd noticed a fair few. It was long bombs to two on ones majority of the time and, and, or two on three. So lost con- contested, um, which essentially, yeah, we, we just lost a lot of the ball from him. And, and as much as I, I love seeing him try and take it on, it's the decision making that's been a, an issue so far. Um, where was, was it his fault though, or was it the team not being there? Like, there, there's a bit of one affecting disposal. Was he, he? I don't know. He looks like he had a solid game. He looks like he didn't lose confidence or anything. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to keep him. I'd be, I'd, I know a lot of Saints fans would think it's, it's time to drop him. But um, I think he's, he's at least got another game in him. Let him try and rebound against Richmond. Uh, he did play well in some regards, but he, he, he could have been better in others. Um, so yeah, I, I see, I see why. Um, you know, he's probably had a good game in some regards, but I, a game I wouldn't be, you know, telling your dad about or anything. <laughs> so, like, um, yeah, like, it's, I don't know. It's a, it's enough. It's a hard one to judge. Uh, Essendon do look a lot better. Um, I think they're potentially final sides, whereas I wasn't really sure about that at the start of the year. And I think their um, additions in uh, Gresham and Dersma and Mackay really stood up. So I think it, it's been a good off season for them and, and they've definitely improved a fair bit. Um, look, moving on to the next game, because I don't want to talk about St Kilda's loss too much. Um, <laughs> Port Melbourne. Uh, I have an interesting stat here from Andrew Whelan from the, the side graphics there. Um, 
in yeah, he he basically simulated the fifty shots in the in the match uh, ten thousand times, and he had Melbourne winning that match only four percent of the time. Um, so yeah, very interesting statistic there. Um, I thought I'd bring that to people's attention just to to show how good uh, how good Melbourne were in terms of their expected score plus minus. Um, if you were to go to Melbourne's uh, expected score plus minus, sorry, I'm just pulling it up myself. Um, they had a plus 33.9, uh, which was pretty astounding. And if if you look at kind of their their control of that sort of middle section of the game, they they really um or their their loss of control in, in that middle section of the game, um, they did really well to to manage to to make this a, a win. So very impressed by them. I do wonder how their their forwards can go though, um, like you know long term. What did you, what did you think, mate? Ah, uh, yeah, like you're saying, it was a crazy game. Like Port was clearly the the, the better side for most of the match. Yep. I think apart from the last quarter, I think within the last quarter, Melbourne did look better and just held them off and looked like they had the game in control, even though they probably shouldn't have. Like, yeah, I mean, Gorn just demolished this this week. Um, you, I you'd hate not to have him in your super coach. I think. Yeah, you call him Cook. Yeah, I did think he might he might um be a little cooked. You know, all of Melbourne might be a little cooked. We don't really know yet. Well, that, that'll that'll come out with time. Um, Big win, man. Big win over put Adelaide and Adelaide. It was. I think I think staying in Adelaide for the week might might disadvantage them a little bit. Uh, maybe it is a pretty boring city. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, otherwise, no, I do I do think they'll be all right. Um, I think they they looked good. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty disappointed in in Port. I think without May, this should have been a match that they just, they just took advantage of. It it should have been relatively even outside, in inside the the sort of midfield. Um, relatively even in terms of Melbourne's forward line versus um, uh, Port's defence, and it really it, it should have been right for the picking for for Port's forwards. So. Uh, yeah, for me, it, it definitely looked like they had the game at one point, but they they just didn't capitalise, and they left the door open. And Melbourne Melbourne took that slight ajar, that four percent chance, and they they won. Um, yeah, I think I think Port really need to win next week. They they can't lose two in a row um, at, at home. And who did they no, have? Let, let, I don't. I don't think they need to win at all. I think it's easily a game they should probably should probably throw. <laughs> That's right. They're versing Essendon. <laughs> um, yeah. So look, I I think as a general, uh, they they kind of need next week, and and it'd be good to see Essendon get up. But I I think Port should be able to get this one back. Um, we we owe them one after that uh, Dan Houston goal after the siren last year. That's true. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, look, if that happens again, <laughs> you guys, are, yeah, you guys are gonna be angry. Um, look, yeah, it, it'll be an interesting match. Uh, moving on to the Dogs versus uh, Eagles, the battles of the Wests. Um, it was a good win for the Dogs, uh, it, but it was an expected win. Um, two in a row now against potential bottom sides. Uh, a semi-injured Bont sitting in the forward line, with matches to come against Cats, Bombers, and St Kilda. I'm hesitant to say I know what will happen in any of those games. Um, I, I still yeah. don't know where they're at. No, dogs are very hard to read. They, they've, they've, they've won quite convincingly, but their games they should win convincingly. They have, they have a fairly experienced sort of core group that you think should just carry them a little bit further, but they just seem to drop games. Yeah, if Bond and Pelly is, is injured, it's a, it's a real, real worry. Yeah, um, not only for my super coach because I captained him this week, which I'm thankfully kicked what three or four, but um, yeah, long term, it's it kind of makes me wonder because I think you you were going to mention something about him, but um, yeah, McRae he didn't do that well, um, and considering they didn't, have like got him, the possessions. Yeah, yeah, he did. I I guess they just didn't. They didn't look dominant in that first quarter, which which is kind of what worries me. Um, Eagles actually looked like they were playing to a similar standard, and then obviously Bulldogs were going to pull away at some point. But 
to to have them at an even peggings towards quarter time was quite the surprise for me. Um, so I don't I don't know whether I just don't. Um, and look, they could get a lot better, but if if they're on the same par as the Eagles for even a quarter of like every game for the rest of the year, that's that's nearly twenty more losses, wouldn't you say? Like it's it's not good. So um, yeah, I, I I just don't know what to say about them. Um, but I think. Do you, do you think Jack McRae keeps his spot? I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I don't <laughs> think there's many people knocking on the door in their in their um, VFL side. So I'd, I'd, I'd say probably. Uh, Ed, Ed, Ed Richards, I think, will be back from concussion. Is that? I'm not sure if it's 12 days yet or. I'm not sure, but they, they did they bring play? Deray in, and they've also got Bramble that they might drop as well. So I'm I'm not sure on that regard. Um, I reckon you probably keep McKay, McKay in over both of those players. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Bevo's a weird one. You can't really tell. But I think it is time to move on to Sharon shenanigans. Oh, look at this. Great shot of something. Oh, so good. Bang! Uh, this week's Sharon shenanigan, mate. Uh, there was a few odd ones before we actually get into it. Um, yeah, um, the streaker, today's game. There was a streaker. There was lightning. Um, there was a few uh, just scones throughout the week. The um, That that just kick from, from Nick Martin out of the full from like two metres away, that was that was pretty insane. Um, but I think I think you've got you got one here. As well, what do, you, what do you what do you reckon's got it? I don't think you go past a, a Sava radically uh, marking it, chest mark in the on the goals line. Yeah, but to gift him a goal, that was just it's just a brain fade, just a massive brain fade. Yeah, you'd be devastated come Monday morning. I, you know, it's one of those ones that you wonder if they even watch footage over it, because like it'll get yeah. crucified so heavily in the media that it's like, well. Did you, did you learn your lesson? Yep. All right. We don't need to talk. Like that's that's almost the outcome there for me. It's so yeah, such a brain it's just dead. A silly thing. mistake. Yeah. Um. But look, moving on to unsung hero of the week. The hell with being an unsung hero. I want to be sung. Debated over this one for a little bit. Um. I think this guy doesn't get his his plaudits. Um. And the only reason I wasn't gonna, I kind of was a bit hesitant on a. On a green uh, straight away, it was just because their team lost this week. But yeah, do you, you think Willem Drew deserves it this week? Yeah, I I think Willem Drew had a very very good game for Port, and I think he's criminally criminally underrated. He's turned into a very 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 handy player. I, I think tend compliments to agree. compliments Butters and Rosie very well. Yep, very yep. very important to their to their lineup. I, I love him. Um, he's a, he's just a great player. Um, there's a few at, at Port that I think are, are kind of under appreciated. Um, it, it depends. Like, Bergman, yeah, opinion. I was literally thinking Bergman and Burton. Um, <laughs> both of those yeah, two yeah. super unappreciated, underappreciated as well. Outside of kind of the Port Adelaide and maybe Adelaide uh, football world. So, um, yeah, give them I guess all three kind of their props there. Um, moving on, we've got, we've got kind of the final two games of the week. Um, what was probably the the game of the week in Richmond, Sydney, I did struggle to watch this game. I was was absolutely dead tired. Um, but I, I managed to watch a bit of most of the first quarter, most of the last quarter. Um, I actually fell asleep in between. Um, but yeah, I, I was upset because, and I had to go back and watch a bit because, yeah, Richmond caused a major upset. They nearly doubled their tackle count from 32 to 59 in between weeks. They did have three major losses for next week, uh, maybe three. Uh, Baker's re- reported for one week, and then we've got Lynch out for 10 and Bolter out for 3-5. So, um, yeah, look, great game by them. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately didn't get enough watching time in myself. Um, what are your thoughts? No, I was the same. I was Easter with the family, so I didn't really get to watch it. I was trying to watch a bit of the replays today, but I still had no idea how how Richmond managed to win this one. Like it doesn't doesn't make yeah. a lot of sense to me. 
I um I'm so upset that I didn't because I'm this I watched a little bit of the replays and it shows you so much. But I mean, I'm, it's one of those games you almost wish you were at because it's like I'd, I'd yeah. love to see how they they really broke down the the defensive structures of Sydney and got past it because it's it's not um. It's not something they've been able to do this year. And I think they may be tapped into sort of their Richmond of old for a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's for me, it's a, uh, it's something I, I know really what to say about Richmond because I didn't see enough, but it brings enough questions in for Sydney. This was an opportunity to go clear top of the ladder against their crosstown rival in, in greater West and Sydney giants, but they didn't. And they lost to a team that they probably should have won against. Um, Admittedly, you know, they, they did lose away from home, but, you know, they're going to have to play the, the MCG if they want to make the grand final. So if you're losing in Richmond, it's not a good sign. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have any takeaways from this before we kind of move on? No, like it's a, just a crazy game, I think. Like Richmond Richmond put together a must have solid win to, to take out the Swans. I don't know if it was a bad day from the Swans yet or if it's just... Just a yeah. good day from Richmond. Who knows? But yeah, look, I yeah, mean, I think, I think I'm hoping it was a bad day from the Swans with St Kilda playing Richmond next week, and they're outs. So <laughs> I think for us to find a bit of form, it'd be nice to walk away with our first hundred point win in in maybe two three years. Um, so yeah, I think I think that'd be great if we could pull it off. But um, yeah, I think Richmond's maybe showing more than I I thought at the start of the year too. So I, that might be. Um, pie in the sky sort of thoughts uh look i guess we're on to the final match of the round hawks cats touched on it already odd game um you know streaker lightning uh just yeah don't really don't really know what to to say about it because i i thought it was over at half time i don't know about you but i mean half time wasn't it? it was back on at half time was it, it was, was only it a couple quarter points, time, it, maybe? Oh, yeah, sorry, quarter time. Yeah. Geelong shot out to the quick lead, but yeah, they, they brought it back. They they shot out. And, and look, I mean, if you look at uh, the final expected ratings from Andrew Wheeland here, you've got in that first quarter, Geelong got a plus minus um, on their expected score of plus 20 points. Um, so they did get they did get 43 points in for, in that first quarter, but... You know, it, it does suggest maybe Hawthorne was a bit more in the game than, than kind of we think. They did only have a little bit of their forward time, um, getting just below 40. But look, every second quarter they came back. Um, the next quarter they they had 62%, and in that final quarter they had 63 So I think the wind played a fair bit, um, and, and kind of the weather played a fair bit in this performance to, towards um, kind of the, the results. But... Look, I'm more impressed by by Hawthorne than I've been. Um, And, yeah, it kind of still leaves me with that thought that maybe the Cats, um, their early season ladder might not line up with their end of season ladder. Um, With matches against Western Bulldogs, North, the Lions, and then Carlton coming up over the next month, I just don't know what will happen in any of them. Like... Cats versus Western Bulldogs. Uh, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's a very it's up in the air game, isn't it? Like Cats versus North, I'd say the same thing. North has been significantly better than I expected them to be. Um, like Cats probably should win, but I'm not sure. Lions after that. I I don't I don't know. Like I I, I think by that time the Lions should be should be back. I think it'd be a tough match. Unless they lose to North and, and which Unless they knew to North. I mean, at that point, you almost start planning for next season. Like, you may as well tank. <laughs> like, I mean, it's it's one of those ones where I I don't know what to think of the Cats for a little while. I, until they start playing Carlton, they've got a few tougher matches after that. Until they play Carlton, I'm I'm not going to be certain of, of what I think of, of Geelong. Um, look, solid win, but it, it was an expected win. Uh any sort of takeaways before we look at wrapping it up, mate? Yeah, I thought the same thing. Just a just a solid solid game from Geelong. Hawthorne did look hot in a few patches and sort of brought the heat, but yep. uh, yeah, Colt, Geelong was just too too strong. Way too, too good. strong. And um, yeah, look, I I think at the end of the day, it's it's a result we all expected. Um, so 
Geelong gets the tick. They they don't raise more questions that I maybe don't even need to be raising about them. And uh, they move on to next week. Um, look, I think we quickly go over the rolling all Australian. You're Australian. Be Australian. There hasn't been a ton of changes this week. Um, we had a bit of a debate on Harris Andrews as, as we have probably made a little bit of um, ground in, in getting the uh, data to do the work for us in maybe the next few weeks. We, we might have a result there. Um, but we, we're still debating for now. So, so we removed Harris Andrews and we brought in Alex Pierce. Um, the media started going pretty nuts on him. This after after this win and, and their solid shutdown of Adelaide's forward line, um, he's been solid pretty much every week. And with Harris Andrews having lost three times in a row now, it's it's kind of hard to keep saying he's he's the best fullback in the league. So we've got uh we've got the three match winning Fremantle Docker fullback Alex Pierce taking over that role. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think Alex Pierce is worthy, but yeah, I don't think Har- I think Harris Andrews might be stiff. I think he still played some good footy. I agree. Um, it'll be it'll be tough. It'll be it'll be back and forth over the next few weeks. I think. I tend to agree, and I think until we can get uh, the data doing this, you and I might have a few more discussions about <laughs> Harris Andrews um, and, and that role particularly. Um, moving on to the other kind of major changes uh, we did. There wasn't many. Um, we have taken uh, Matty Rao out of the following the ball position. Uh, just with how well Sarong's been playing, it's hard to say he deserved to sit on the bench while while Matt Rao's taken a week off. Um, the The rest of the lineup's hard to change. There, there's quite a few players here that have, have had the week off. Um, Noah Anderson, Tom Green... Um, you, you got Sam Flanders in there as well as Jesse Hogan. Um, yeah, it's just a bit difficult. So, look, for, for them, it's all kind of saying fairly similar there. We do have one new addition in the, uh, I guess, for for our uh, interchange, but uh, defender, Nick Vloston, mate. Uh, what did you think of his game this week? Uh, yeah, like, like I haven't watched the full game this week completely yeah but i've seen a lot of the a lot of the replay and the highlights yep and it looks like his last quarter was just simply insane like, yeah i mean looking yeah, at his whole game really uh but the last quarter especially he had 13 marks um i think it was 15 inter- intercept possessions um yeah, in, intercepts 15 it's it's just three turnovers um seven score involvements he didn't even like, I mean, he got a crazy super draw at, at one, um, 167, but yeah, he, he didn't, um, he didn't particularly do anything wrong, um, in, in his match. Um, 20, 29 disposals at 29% effective. It's, that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, hundred percent disposal efficiency there. Um, it's. Yeah, it's one of the better games that, that you can play, and it's, it's hard to ignore. Uh, so out goes Chad Warner, and, and in comes Nick Vloston. Uh, look, that's pretty much it. We do have the tips for this coming week. Uh, quickly, we've got Adelaide versus Melbourne, Adelaide's home game. I've gone Melbourne. Uh, are you thinking the same? No, I've gone Adelaide. I, I, think, I think they've got to bounce back and big, big gather round opening night. They, 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 that's this is the moment they need to stand up in. And I think okay. Melbourne staying away from Melbourne for the extra week just might not might be enough. Might be. Look, it'll be an interesting match, and I think Adelaide's most important game to date. Zero and four. I think there's been one team that's made the finals with that start in the AFL era. So, um, yeah, not not what you want. Uh, moving on to the next game, Brisbane North. Uh, I've gone Brisbane. What are your thoughts? Ah, uh, yeah, Brisbane, surely, surely, they get their first it. win at home. Uh, the they can't lose again at home, and yeah, I, I just can't see it happening. Uh, match Port versus Essendon. Port at home uh, is my call. I can't see them losing twice. What's What's your thought? Uh, I've gone Essendon, but it's biased and not confident. <laughs> I, I, I I don't know. I just I just still feel like it's a game we could win. 
Fair enough. Um, moving on you to you generally West... play Adelaide Oval. Yeah, it's well. Look, it's a lovely oval as well. If you if you get the chance, it's probably the best thing in Adelaide. Um, look, moving on to the next game. I don't mean to put on Adelaide. It's a lovely place. Um, moving on to the next game, West Coast Eagles versus Swans. What's your thoughts, mate? I'm thinking it's a pretty easy Swans victory. Yeah, actually, I would have said the same thing about the Richmond game though, but it didn't turn out that way. That is true. I guess you never say never. Um, look. I think we can pencil that one in fairly early, to be honest. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll reassess come quarter time. Um, Frio versus Carlton. What are your thoughts? Ah, battle of the undefeated, eh? It's it's yeah. um, it's, it's a be... pretty pretty tough game to pick in Adelaide. Yeah, I mean it's a free it's a free hit for both sides. Um, neither team's home. Um, I'm going Carlton. What are your thoughts? I am leaning towards Frio. Fair enough. I I think Freer probably has a little bit better of a defence, but yeah, it'll be it'll be an interesting match. I'm I'm quite keen because I, I think that'll tell us where Freer might be this year. Um, Suns versus Giants. I think that's a fairly easy Giants win. What what's your thoughts? Giants win, surely. Yeah, I'd be surprised otherwise. Uh, Richmond versus St Kilda. Um, look, I feel like without the injuries, maybe Richmond would stand a bit of a bit of a chance. But I'm I'm back in St Kilda for a big win. What's your thoughts? Uh, St Kilda as well. Yeah. Yeah, and look, I think that's the f- we've got one more for the final of the round. We've got Collingwood versus Hawthorne. Um, I'd be surprised if the premiers didn't take out who I think is going to be the spoon. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I'm back in Collingwood as well, but they did get knocked off by Hawthorne last year, so you never know. Yeah, it, it was – if they lost last week, it was going to be a massive danger game for me, so <laughs> I don't know. Um, look, that's Wooden Spoon data. That's uh, that's our chat for this week's round three uh, review. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. I think we've got a few things in the works, uh, so keep an eye out for our uh, videos coming soon. Um Subscribe if you liked what you saw. Like if you liked what you saw. And, yeah, we'll be back this time next week. Um, Thanks again, Chris, and um, thanks for your time and, and talk to you soon.